Hi, I'm Danny, and I bought some more speakers. The Bang & Olufsen's. Uh, they're kind of like these fringe speakers that when you're looking for like normal Bluetooth speakers and you're searching online, you start to see like these really exotic speakers that are a little bit pricier than all the rest. Turns out they're the Bang & Olufsen. So I figured they were worth looking into even though they're maybe a little bit more out there. Also, I like green. Don't, don't you like green? It's a, it's a good color. It's the color of nature. I've got the Explore and then the A1 Gen 2, which is like a big, it's a big Echo Dot, essentially. It's just like somebody took the Echo Dot and just smushed it down some more. And it comes with a little tassel, which I don't really know what this tassel is for. It's made out of like a fancy leather, but I feel like this might break, even though it feels pretty durable. When I got them first in hand, one of the things that really impressed me was like the aluminum finish on them. Like it's, it's definitely super premium. This entire grill area on the Explorer is aluminum with like some sort of plasticky uh, rubbery surface on the top for the buttons and then like another rubbery surface on the bottom for like grip on the table. Same thing with the, uh, the A1 here. It's got a rubberized bottom and then another aluminum top. Apparently, the aluminum used uh, on the Explorer specifically is grade two oxidized aluminum, which essentially, I guess they put it in sulfuric acid. Yeah, I've had aluminum poles like I used in lacrosse before and those things get all banged up. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe this is better. It'll let me know in the comments if you've ever had any problems with these. Overall, the construction seems pretty nice on both of them. They definitely have the premium feel. I did read one comment online of a guy who wasn't quite happy with the construction of the A1. It's a great sounding speaker, but if you drop it on its side, it will shear off two to the three speaker posts inside. How do I know this? I bought one second hand, set it up, and apparently three of the five posts that hold the speaker to the base of the unit were sheared off, causing the vibration. And then he glued them back in place and he said it was fine. Yeah, like how did that happen? Like if it's an outdoor speaker, that should be better. So anyways, that's just a fluke case. I'm sure other speakers have issues too. I just kind of picked up on that one while I was doing my own research. As far as specs go, um, the Explorer has Bluetooth 5.2. It's an IP67 and 27 hour battery life. That's, that's the crazy thing about it. Apparently this has 27 hours of battery life. That's insane. The Emberton, which is like one of my favorite speakers, has like 20. And that's really good, but this blows that out of the water. And apparently, uh, according to some other reviewers, like they had it on the mid listening volume and it lasted like 33 hours plus, like almost 45 minutes past, which is insane. With the, uh, the A1 Gen 2, it's a 18 hour advertised battery life. Interestingly enough though, the, gen, the first generation of the A1 only had like four hours of battery apparently but it sounded amazing. I kind of want to get my hands on the first version to see what it sounds like. But anyways, 18 hours is really good. For the A1, you do get a smattering of different features. It's got Bluetooth 5.1. It's also IP67 and you can use your voice with it. So really that's the big difference between these two in my eyes is like they're, they're not that much different size wise, but the fact that you can use your voice with this one and make calls and talk to Echo devices, is, it definitely adds some unique features and these actually, I both got these for 200 bucks. So yeah. For our speaker comparison today, I have pulled out my favorite speakers, including the Bose Flex, the Marshall Emberton, and the JBL Flip 5. So these are all my favorite speakers. So let's see how they stack up compared to the Bang & Olufsen's. <laughs> Everybody
These two speakers like almost don't fit in the same sound category as the others. They're, they're actually significantly different. First of all, I'm just gonna say that the uh, Explorer has awesome 3D60 sound. Like the, it, it is so even. It's probably the most even speaker of all of these speakers. The A1 was definitely mostly directional, kind of like top firing. <laughs> they do really well with the high mids. Like they have probably the clearest high middle range that I've heard of all the speakers. So they're definitely doing something right, but it's not necessarily like the whole picture you're getting. So like the bass on the Explorer, forget it. There's, there's like no bass on this thing. It still sounds really good and pleasing, but it's there is no, no thumping of any bass to be had whatsoever on this speaker. And it is thoroughly outdone by the Bose Flex, the JBL and the Emberton and just a little bit by the A1, which is my next point. The A1 for being bigger is not necessarily that much louder or bassier. I listened to all these about kind of like upper middle volume, nothing super loud. And the, this one doesn't really add much bass. Now, granted, I was holding the speaker up in the air and I'm sure if you put it on a surface that would help um, the percussiveness a little bit, but um, it really wasn't that much significant over the Explorer. I'd say like maybe you're getting like a 20 to 30% boost on the base. With them being the same price, like it really would come down to a feature set more so than the audio quality. Sound wise, these both these speakers sound almost exactly the same. Like female vocals, they are beautiful. Like they, they balance the sound. It's a very clear, crisp sound. And they did a really good job. They don't sweeten up the 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 beefier side of the music like the bass as much as the other do, speakers do. Yeah, for like higher pitched vocals, like think Alison Krauss, yeah, Tracy Chapman, Jewel. These are probably great because you don't necessarily need the rest of the music, but it sounds like it's sacrificing some of the other um, parts of the frequency range for that. So these sound beautiful, but I think maybe <laughs> if you're gonna get a Bang & Olufsen, maybe you need to move up and get one of their bigger speakers to bring the bass back in. Normally it's like, it's either better or it's worse. And if I had to choose, I would still probably choose the Bose Flex over these guys. Would I choose? <sighs> yeah, for a hundred bucks, I'd just get the JBL and I'd, I'd call it a day. Uh, the Emberton, yeah, I'd probably just buy the Emberton in place of these. Uh, I think you'll be happier with the other speakers, most likely with the caveat of if you really like vocals and you want to concentrate on that, these might be great. Or the 27 plus hour battery life, which is insane and makes the speaker fit into a unique segment. So yeah. Oh, also, I guess if you were going to, a lot of people probably compare this to the Bose Flex to the A1, get the Bose Flex. It's $50 cheaper. It's a, it's definitely a better buy than this. This is cool, but it's like, yeah, for 200 bucks, it's a lot for what it is. Also, I'm trying to use Amazon affiliate links to generate a little more income so I can like produce more videos and start making more interesting topics and doing like more adventurous videos and stuff. So if you'd like to support that, it will definitely help if you use the Amazon affiliate link I've got below. Um, if you're gonna buy one, I mean, why not, why not just buy it from the links below? So anyways, I would very much appreciate it. And if you've made it this far in the video, you are a dedicated viewer, gold star, and thank you so much. See you later.